Good evening, and welcome to the City of Dublin Planning and Zoning Commission. You can join the meeting in person at 5555 Perimeter Drive, and also access the meeting via the live stream on the City's website. We welcome public participation, including comments on cases. At this time, if you will please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will turn the time over to Ms. Beale. Will you please call roll? Mr. Snare? Here. Ms. Call? Here. Mr. Superlack? Here. Mr. Way? Here. Ms. Harder? Here. Mr. Fishman? Here. And Mr. Chinock is excused this evening? We assume. Excuse if not, assume. we will. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right. Um, we, we do have documents and minutes for acceptance this evening. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to accept documents into the record and approve the minutes for the meetings held on March the 2nd and March the 16th. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Supelak. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Way. Ms. Beal? Mr. Fishman? Yes. Ms. Harder? Yes. 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 Thank you, Ms. Beal. The Planning and Zoning Commission is an advisory board to City Council when rezoning and platting of property are under consideration. In such cases, City Council receives recommendations from the Commission. In other cases, the Commission has the final decision-making responsibility. Anyone who intends to address the Commission on any of these administrative cases must be sworn in. Tonight, there are two cases eligible for the consent agenda. Those are cases two and three, both four towns on the parkway, Cases 23-023 PP preliminary plat and 23-024 final plat. Uh, we have received public comment on one of these cases, so I will turn the time over to Ms. Roush to read that into the record. Thank you. Our public comment is from Monica Gacka. She lives at 4413 Zachary Court, Dublin, Ohio, 43017. <clears throat> And this says, uh, please read aloud. Thank you for the opportunity to share comments with the Planning and Zoning Commission. I appreciate the time and energy you put into your roles on the commission. Thank you for hearing citizen concerns and fostering public engagement, excuse me, positive engagement. Everywhere you look in the Bridge Street District, there is new development in process. It seems these developments are happening at a rapid pace with several projects in flight concurrently. I understand that development proposals to the Planning and Zoning Commission must be evaluated solely on the contents of that given proposal. However, the changes that new developments specifically involving increased density bring do not live in a vacuum in real life. There are real impacts to residents and despite planning's best efforts by developers and city staff, not every outcome can be predicted. I am concerned that too many projects are happening all at once and in doing so, visibility of future project is blurred with nearby residents to deal with the fallout. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roush. Does anyone from the, wish to have these cases removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Way. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Supalak. Ms. Beal. Ms. Harden. Yes. Mr. Supalak. Yes. Mr. Way. Yes. Ms. Call. Yes. Mr. Sneer. Yes. Mr. Fishman. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Beal. Our next case this evening is for an informal review case. Anyone who was in attendance for the previous case, thank you for coming this evening, and we're grateful to be efficient with your time. Uh, Ashland Multifamily Development at PID 273-012284 and 273-002453. 23-016 INF informal review. This application is a request for a multifamily development consisting of 300 residential units and a standalone residential clubhouse for an approximately 19 acre site zoned office, laboratory and research district. The site is located north of the intersection of Blazer Parkway with Ashland Service Road. Mr. Hounchel, welcome this evening. I will turn our time over to you. 
Thank you very much. Good evening. Uh, before you tonight is an informal review for your consideration. Uh, this is an optional step in a plan unit development district uh, process. As you can see, an informal and concept plan are both considered under the same category here as they are not required, uh, but they are often recommended from staff uh, as they're great opportunities to present a new application uh, to provide feedback and, and receive suggestions uh, for on the development proposal. Uh, so tonight there's no decision being made. Um, this is to help for a future formal submittal of a rezoning and preliminary development plan. So this site is approximately 19 acres in size, currently zoned office, laboratory, and research, uh, and is located in the Dublin corporate area plan. Uh, you can see the site sits on the north side of the Blazer Parkway, uh, and also has the Cosgrave Ditch, which runs along the northern side of the site, which is where you see a significant amount of vegetation. Um, shown on the screen are also some, some views from Blazer Parkway uh, to the south of the site, so you can see that it's relatively flat, currently vacant, more agricultural uh, in its current state. So as stated, this is located in the Dublin Corporate Area Plan. So this is a special area plan that was adopted by City Council uh, back in 2018. The goals of this district uh, that extend from West Bridge Street all the way to the southern border of the city, uh, it was to encourage a variety of uses uh, for amenities for uh, workers, hotel visitors, and residents on the west side or on the east side of France Road, to utilize new open spaces as focal points and usable amenities, and to support new and fill residential development at key locations in the area. The reason for this, this area plan is because this area is a legacy office district that is really lacking in a lot of amenities, uh, that when we were going through this process, that was something that was heavily desired by not just the residents in the area, but the workers that, that commute to this area. So that's how this uh, plan became, became permanent and the recommendations here, which I'll outline a few of them as we go through this presentation. The site is located in the MUR1 Metro Blazer subdistrict of the area plan. Uh, some of the, the uses that are recommended here include office, uh, residential infill, and uh, key neighborhood commercial, uh, specifically along France Road, but also in other select areas throughout this area. So the area, area plan does outline a number of vacant sites within the district. Uh, this is one of them, and it's labeled as item or site six in the plan. Uh, so. The recommendations for this site include uh, recommendations for uses. Those uses would include uh, supporting office and tech uses, but it also does call out residential as a subordinate use to office uh, where it's appropriate. Additionally, this site also is called for a new north-south uh, public street connection, which would connect Metro and Blazer uh, to the north and south of this site. Uh, for this site, Blazer is the only uh, consideration for that connection as this does not connect to uh, Metro to the north. Uh, additionally, in terms of the built environment for this site, it's recommended that the site meet uh, the building, new buildings would be a minimum of four stories and a max of six stories. So shown on the screen is the proposed site plan before you tonight. Uh, the applicant is presenting seven residential structures, which would include 30 residential units this comes out to a density of about 16 units per acre um, on the 19 acre site. Additionally, there's about 450 parking spaces provided. This comes out to about one and a half parking spaces per unit. Um, the way that this site plan is oriented is that the parking operates as more of a buffer between what's existing to the east and southwest, as those are more flex office, uh, office and industrial type uses with large um, large surface parking areas. So you have the parking which buffers the building, the residential buildings, and then you have the central park, which is between the five buildings centrally located on the site. Uh, so that's the key feature. The, the open space is, the, the buildings are really designed around this open space, uh, which then connects to the Cosray corridor and around the periphery of the site. So you'll see a number of uh, shared use paths, shared use path, paths, man, words are hard, um, to, to really connect the site internally and also for future development in the area. Um, you'll also see, which is highlighted in red, uh, a north-south Metro Blazer connection. So as contemplated with the Dublin Corporate Area Plan, they are providing this new extension of a public street. Um, 
but also as stated, this can only go to about the southern border of that Cosgrave uh, corridor. So it's currently placed in, an, in a spot where we can continue to study where this could connect to Metro to the north. Uh, we have not studied this internally with staff, uh, and this is really just more of an informal and, and a, a concept layout for this public street. So that certainly is something that we'll continue to work on as we go about this. But um, this is proposed as a public street, and it would be need to be considered as a public street moving forward. Um, in the staff report, uh, staff did provide a few considerations regarding this public street, but also just the layout of the site and the uses, as this is a single-use site uh, for residential. Uh, but this new public street could also provide future opportunities for uh, additional amenity uses that are currently not in this area. Uh, and finally, the applicant provided some conceptual elevations for what these buildings could look like. Uh, these are more modern with more modern uh, materials, and they, the buildings all vary between four and three stories. Uh, so as stated with the recommendations for this area, it's recommended the buildings be between four and six, so this would be slightly deviating from that, not going over, but going under what's recommended. So with that, there are four questions uh, before you tonight. The first question is about the proposed use and whether it meets the special area plan and future land use area plan and recommendations. Uh, the second is around the proposed layout of the site. The third is about the height and massing of the residential buildings, understanding what is recommended in the area plan. And then the last question is about the design and layout of open space throughout the site. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hanschel. And we will handle questions separately for both staff and the applicant. So looking to the commission at this time, are there questions that you would like to direct to Mr. Hanschel? Mr. Way. Um, I have a couple questions. Uh, the site access, obviously there's a very narrow dimension um, along Blazer Parkway. Is there any, is there any rationale for where that entrance point might be, um, if, is the location that's on the site plan been, been agreed to or should it align with a driveway across the street? Is that still under discussion? Yes, yeah, so um, good evening. We have not um, by, by any means finalized that location. That would be something as part of a traffic impact study to analyze where that access point for that public street would tie into Blazer Parkway as well as that intersection control. So that's flexible at this point. Correct. And then follow-up question on the connector street. Um, obviously, it has to connect through property to the north that's private. Um, it, based on the, the basic knowledge that we have, is there any other alternative? Or is, is this the ideal location? Or are there other alternatives that might have less impact on private property or a better alignment? So those are property? very, yeah, so those are very good questions. I think for at this stage in this project, we're just looking at what is shown on the Dublin corporate area plan, which is really just kind of a conceptual connection between Blazer Parkway and Metro Place South. So whether this public street ends up in this location, if it takes a different route to make that connection, those are still things, discussions, details that need to be worked through at this stage um, in the project. Um, so we have not vetted those specific details out. But would it be ideally located to the, to the north where it was like in between properties? Like you're, so you're going down a property line as opposed to through? Right, so I mean, those are, that's definitely a sensitive topic and being mindful of that. So trying to make sure we're minimizing impacts to properties to the north. And again, those are discussions that we haven't had to figure out from a transportation standpoint, what makes sense as far as that connection location. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Way. Ms. Harder. I had a question about the uh, park, how large that part is. And is the word park being used um, by the applicant or is it the city is interested in it being a park? So, the, the concept that's shown on the screen, um, that was entirely driven by, by the applicant. I'll, I'll let them speak towards their design of the site and why it, it's tied around that. Um, at this stage, I don't have the size of what that, that open space would be. I know it is more internally facing at the moment, but again, the applicant can be, will happily talk towards that. 
Any other questions from the commission for staff? Mr. Supalak. Mr. Hauschel, how does this, um, I guess I'm going to the unit density in particular, how does the unit density of this uh, stack up against the area plans? So the area plans currently do not call out a minimum or maximum unit per acre for residential. Um, that is, at the moment is at the discretion of city council and planning commission. Um, so right now there's really, there's no basis for this as there's, this is, would be the first residential product in this area. So this would kind of set a precedent for what we would see in the future. Got it. Thank you. Mr. Schneer. Um, what's the parking requirement again? How many spaces per unit is required? So these are both, both items um, are not really reflected too much in the area plan. So because this would be a planned district that would allow some flexibility to talk through that, um, ideally, whatever is, would happen with that planned district is what we would want to carry over with when we do the area rezoning for MUR1. Um, so at the moment, we don't have that. There are recommendations about what type of parking would be available and what type of parking would be appropriate. Um, so that's really what we based this off of currently. Um, but as for specific requirements and kind of the, the goalposts for this, I, I don't have those at the moment. Mr. Hanschel, uh, in reference to the DCAP, uh, there was some reference to infill residential. Can you talk through what the city's recommendation was and what city council passed as far as the DCAP concerns specific to the blazer infill area that we're referring to generally this evening? Sure. Uh, so what is recommended in the Dublin corporate area plan is that residential is certainly something that is considered as infill development, uh, but it is called out specifically to be more um, subordinate to a separate use, whether that's office. Um, it calls out specifically office being the, the primary use with, with residential being subordinate here, but it does call out residential as appropriate in this district. And were there any caveats on location of residential within the DCAP? Uh, location would primarily be not along I-270. So uh, the site does not butt up next to I-270. Uh, we have seen projects where that has been something that has tripped up uh, applications uh, because they are almost immediately impacted by 270. Thank you, Mr. Hanschel. Any other questions for staff at this time? Seeing none, welcome, Mr. Underhill. It's good to see you again. I'll turn the time over to you, and then you know the drill. Yes, thank you, Ms. Call. Appreciate it. Members of the commission, Aaron Underhill, uh, attorney for the applicant, the Pizzuti Companies. Uh, my address is 8000 Walton Parkway, Suite 260 in New Albany. I'm going to bring others up here to do most of the talking because, uh, uh, you know, planning and design are um, really what we're here to talk about. I think philosophically, um, this corporate area plan, and, and I've been before you on other projects, uh, one of them, which was on 270, uh, which was pretty well received, I think. And there's some recognition that uh, residential is appropriate in the area. And I want to get into that a little bit. And, you know, th this undertaking is large in that, you know, we've got a pretty much a single use neighborhood um, that hard to believe that something from the 80s or the 90s or buildings that were built then are now sort of out of date. But um, we also all know what the office market has done in recent years with uh, both, both the pandemic and uh, technology. So it really uh, the vision of the city in terms of turning this into more of a mixed use environment is very appropriate. And um, I think, though, that, um, you know, one of the difficult things is when you come in with with a project, do, do you do a, the mixed use within each particular project or do you bring a single use along that's sort of additive and then is a, is a catalyst for other things? And that's what we believe we are doing here. Um, you know, the, the office park uh, in general, while not as vibrant as it once was, does have activity during the day. And um, uh, I think in order to get the mix of uses that are more uh, restaurant, retail, service, entertainment related, uh, having a, a core bit of residential here is important to, I think I mentioned this with the last project, uh, but in order to uh, attract those other uses so that the 
the timing of, of activity in the area is lengthened and makes it more attractive for those uses to be able to capitalize on, on that and it's not just a nine to five sort of thing. With that being said, um, you know, we believe that this is a complement to the Bridge Street area. It's not Bridge Street and there's, there's a reason you didn't include it all the way out this way as a city. And so I think uh, Jeff Pongonis, our, our planner who will get up here later, described it as kind of a quasi-urban environment. And so what we've tried to do is incorporate a lot of green space, but also um, having that urban feel and trying to combine the two uh, sorts of uh, uh, concepts. Um, I would like to say uh, the other thing before I turn it over uh, to others, uh, Pizzuti did build uh, two buildings up just to the north of this property uh, many years ago and, um, and then uh, to the north, northwest and then one to the northeast that, that are right near and adjacent to this. And so they're very familiar with the area and, and that's why they have so much interest in seeing it transform into something new and different and more contemporary. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Eric Buck with Pizzuti. Great, uh, thank you, Aaron. My name's Eric Buck with Pizzuti Companies, 629 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. So first, I just want to start by saying thank you to the commission for having us here tonight. We really appreciate the opportunity to be here and to present. Um, so again, just thank you and thank for everybody in the audience as well. <clears throat> um, we're very excited about this project. I'm very excited about this opportunity. Um, as Aaron mentioned, you know, we are very familiar with this district um, and we're very excited about the opportunity to continue to partner with Dublin uh, and to continue to invest in this part of the city in the Metro and Blazer districts. So if you can go to the next slide, thank you. <clears throat> so again, so we've actually met with staff several times before this meeting, just their feedback's been I would say invaluable as we continue to go through this concept plan. Um, we really appreciate the time. We really appreciate this process because we believe this process does lead to better projects in the in the long run. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'll say one thing that was very evident when we were meeting with staff was this north-south connection was very important to the city. Um, so it was really preeminent to how we laid out our site plan and what we're presenting today. If you can go to the next slide. Um, so I want to hit this really quick. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these have already been covered, but I really want to talk about the natural assets to our site uh, and some of the natural constraints as well, just a little bit deeper. So some of the natural assets, uh, I mean, the location within Dublin, of course, is one of them, but obviously the, the Cosgrave Corridor is a great amenity feature to our project, uh, as well as the existing tree line perimeter uh, and the adjacent uh, proximity of that existing shared use trail. Um, you know, some of the constraints we were working with as we were trying to lay out the site, uh, it is a, does have a comparatively narrow um, frontage on Blazer Parkway, uh, and it also has kind of an awkward radius there at the southwest of the site that we were working with. Uh, and then, of course, Cosgrave Corridor, that is a floodplain. It does have utilities that are running through it uh, and easements. And then on the very northern border of our property, there's more utility easements there as well. So we really had to keep everything to the south of the Cosgrave Corridor. So really, it does say almost 19 acres, uh, but really the buildable acreage is closer to 14 or 15 acres, uh, which would put our density closer to 20 to 22 units per acre, just for reference. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so this is really showing the framework of how uh, we came up with our concept design. As you can see, the main focal point is that green space. We do know that um, you know, green space in these park-like settings are very uh, important to Dublin. Uh, so it really was a main focal design element as we were going through the process. Um, <clears throat> and then we're also showing that main north-south access uh, running through the site as that would be a public street in the future. And then that future potential connection uh, going north of the site, um, like you said, some of those aren't, haven't been completely figured out. And then in highlighted in green, we're showing um, just potential pedestrian trails and how they would connect uh, through our site and then potentially connect uh, to that existing shared use trail up to the northeast. Um, you can go to the next slide. So I'm going to hand it over to Jeff. Um, he's going to come up here and talk a little bit more uh, about this slide and our and our thought process here, and then I'm going to come back and I'll finish finish the rest of it. 
Great to sit. Uh, good evening. Thanks for having us. Jeff Pungonis, uh, MKSK, uh, Landscape Architecture and Planning. Um, I, I think there's a few things that I want to focus on on the site plan that Eric and Aaron kind of teed up for us, I think. Excuse the interruption. Could you state your address? You did a great job. Oh, with sure. Uh, 712 Park Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Eric and Aaron um, uh, teed this up pretty well, but I think, um, you know, one of the important things to discuss here is the kind of walkable scale um, of the site and of the building. So um, the, the notion that this is still, you know, somewhat urban and somewhat walkable and has the, the qualities of a great neighborhood um, is a complement to the much more urban Bridge Park, um, you know, uh, uh, on the other side of the river. And so the, the, the nature of that site plan, the walkability, the scale, um, is sort of, you know, highlighted or, or focused around a few um, elements. First is the North-South Street, which is intended to be a public street someday, if that connection um, can be made. So you'd have the appropriate right-of-way and the appropriate streetscape details and all the same sort of um, signature qualities of um, sidewalks and um, uh, roadways uh, within Dublin. And several of the you know, um, important buildings in the neighborhood hang off of that primary street so that we are giving it some importance. It does feel like a street, not a drive or a parking lot. So there may be some on-street parking there that feels more like um, what you might see in Bridge Park as opposed to um, a large parking lot. The community building hangs off that street. Some of our taller buildings hang off that street as well as some of the primary amenities. So the notion that that's an important part of the framework of the neighborhood, I think, starts to identify this first as a neighborhood and less as a development project. Um, second, the access to open space and just sort of basic livability um, qualities in a residential neighborhood. So um, Ms. Harder, you asked about how much open space is in, in between the buildings there. It's probably about two and a half acres if you do a really loose bubble and then a, you know, a few more acres scattered around the site. And um, that should be a nice um, scale given the three and four story um, nature of the buildings and, and provide a lot of um, connectivity back over to the amenities for residents without having to tranche their way through a parking lot. So um, that seems pretty appealing to us. Um, this provides an opportunity to leverage that Cosgrave corridor, connect over to Smiley Park and really you know, give folks the ability to have that more intimate park space or intimate community space, but also um, something a little bit more natural along Cosgrave, which could be um, a good first seed planted here for things in the DCAP area to connect up to those um, natural resources. And then finally, out along Blazer Parkway, Kim, I think you were kind of hinting at it. We only have limited frontage there. The geometry is strange. We're on you know, um, a, a radius there. So we need to get that, that access point correct. We need to locate some stormwater correctly, but we are doing what we can to get that clubhouse building, that sort of signature key, um, you know, folly building, if you will, out along Blazer Parkway to present um, this as a residential neighborhood to, you know, um, put your best foot forward out to the public street um, uh, where that opportunity exists. So I think with that, I'll, um, hand it back over. Thanks, Jeff. That was great. Um, you can go to the next slide for me. This will be the last one. Uh, it'll be quick. I mean, we're really here to hear from you all tonight and get your thoughts. Uh, but we did provide uh, just conceptual elevation of our building. It is, you know, as you can see, the architectural massing is characterized by that simple modern block form. And our material palette is the dark masonry brick. Uh, as a primary material, it's really anchoring either side of the building. And then we're mixing in the lighter fiber cement and then adding that kind of wood look accent piece to kind of tie the whole thing together. Um, so with that, again, I just want to say thank you um, for letting us present tonight. Um, and then if you have any questions for us, and we're than happy to answer them. Thank you. Looking to the commission for questions for the applicant. Mr. Schneer. Um, yes, thank you. I have a, a, a couple. Um, 
Did you intend the, the paths within the development? I, I think I saw somewhere the words public use. So it would be intended for non-residents to use those paths? So the, the intent of those paths would be for the people living at the development, but it, it's also our intention to connect to that existing public use path that's up on the northeast. That was my second question. What would it take to create that connection? Well, that's still under... Um, we're still looking into that at this stage. Um, that's why we just said potential future connection. It is something that we would be looking to do, but we still have to look into how to make that happen. And then w what led you to uh, this, you know, seven separate buildings instead of fewer taller buildings, for example? Um, so a lot of it has to do with parking. So we try to be very thoughtful how we went about our parking. Um, and we're restricted a little bit about the amount of units and, and people we can bring in here and still accommodate parking. But we really wanted people to be able to park as close as possible to their front door, right? So if you have taller buildings with less buildings, now you're creating maybe seas of parking or other things where people are having to walk farther with their groceries, stuff like that. We really wanted people to be able to pull as close as their front door as possible with their groceries or things like that, be able to walk in and have the best experience possible. Which is my next question. Um, was the, is the parking, it's one and a half units, or one and a half spaces per unit. Uh, are you, would you be happier with less, or that's what you want? Um, I, I don't think we could go much lower than that. Um, I think one and a half would be appropriate for this development. And why is it? Um, <clears throat> based on your experience? So I mean, with, with a product like this, you typically have a little bit more two-bedroom units, um, which could potentially have more two people with two cars. Um, I think, especially on the weekends, the site could get stressed if we went much lower than this, as from a parking standpoint. It, it, have you done any recent studies, just generically, about density parking and, and not on this site specifically because if it could it's, be a part of our process as we do the traffic study and other things i mean it could be possible at some point that people could actually walk to their jobs in metro center so understanding your question is you don't want as many as much parking and hard surfaces uh, which i can understand but again i i think you know from our standpoint of how we were trying to lay out this site um, we just felt like one and a half was appropriate, but it's something that we can definitely continue to look into as we develop. I don't see the light rail coming by very quickly, so right. I get it. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Schneer. Other questions? Mr. Way. Um, first of all, the two buildings that Pizzuti owns, could we pull up? I just want to be clear. You could, Mr. Underhill said there's two buildings. So, Did you just identify the two buildings? Yeah, so the northern two that says office, four stories, right, just north of our site. And then the, <clears throat> yep, those two. And then if you go to the east, not the building directly, yeah, that one, that four story. But not right the there. one story. Yep, not the one story. Right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so the, yeah, there's two four stories and then not the one story and then the other four story. Yes, so that's right. So Mike Shavini was saying that we developed them, but no longer own them. I'm sorry, what was that? We developed them, but do not own them. You do not own them. We do not right. own so them. You're, okay, thanks for that clarification. Um, can we go back to the site plan, Zach? So can um, the nature of the street, the connector street, um, obviously you've, you've worked to put, align buildings with it, mm -hmm. trying to make it more of an urban street, um, what is your thinking about what happens at, on the, at the ground floor of those buildings? Uh, so those would be residential units. Residential. Yep. Okay. Have, had you considered any other kind of uses like at a ground level, like, like, could there be some like workspaces or something that, so that's kind of a live work environment just to start to change the character of that as a street? Um, so 
when we were looking at we this site, we were looking at doing a lot of those type of things in that clubhouse up front. It's kind of a central gathering place for residents to meet and and do some co-working. Actually, it's one of the amenities that we were planning on having in that clubhouse was a co-working space and uh, lounge space. Um, with a lot of the three-story units um, and three-story buildings, you have the kind of pass-through walk-ups, so you don't really have that opportunity. Uh, and then with the four-story buildings, uh, we're just trying to maximize as much as we can on that first floor for units. So, so my follow-up was the clubhouse. So the clubhouse is really the the one place that where there's a mix of uses, and Correct. you've got you're saying there's some co co working space there. Is is that that's a totally a private though facility? Yes, that would be just an amenity to our residents on the site. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Miss Mister Way. Miss Harder, did you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. All right, looking to the rest of the commission, any questions for the applicant? Mr. Fishman. I don't want to be repetitious, but my concern was parking also. But um, did you consider parking under the buildings? Did, uh, what, um, so we've looked at various ways to park, and we really do feel like the way that we've laid this out currently is the best use for the space. We're able to maximize that first level for units and then still have the appropriate amount of parking per building. I couldn't find exactly the material. Uh, uh, how big are these units and how many bedrooms are they? So they are going to be a mix of one and two bedrooms. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry? I, I thought that. That's yeah. okay. Uh, how, what's the ratio between one and two? Um, it'll be close to 50-50, about half and half. Uh, because our experience has been that that if, especially with two bedrooms, but even one bedroom, there's usually two occupants. Okay, as you, I think you mentioned that, that means two cars usually. Okay, and you've got one and a half, um, and are, are we going to have room for on-street parking, or what, where's the overflow going to go? So, well, not everybody has two cars. I will start with that. What? I said not everybody has two cars. I will start Most with Most people, young couples that would... So what there. we're seeing, especially in some of our other product, is that people are, they are sharing their cars and using rideshare services, or they're walking to work or using scooters or bicycles, and they're being more mobile without vehicles, which is why we feel like we may be able to get away with a lower parking ratio at this location. Okay. I, 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 from Bridge Park, I don't buy that. I mean, there's a lot of on-street parking use because... A lot of the one bedrooms have two app, two uh, people living in them, and, and have two cars. You know, so uh, 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 I'm not going to do your job for you, but that worries me about parking. Uh, yeah, and, can I ask a clarifying question? Because um, I find myself up here oftentimes hearing competing points of view, and so Mr. Schneer, were you trying to go the other way with it in terms of wanting less? Democracy just is bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schneer, Mr. Schneer, can I? Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. I, I'm I'm erring on the other side, given trends, given a the desire to not have a sea of asphalt, and b sort of the trend of mobility and mode different modes of mobility. And and, and I will inter interject that we are at informal review for kind of the building blocks because this is looking at going planned unit we would have the opportunity to look at all of the planned unit development text that would govern this site at a future meeting yeah Could i make one or two quick statements about parking since it is sort of foundational to the plan so i think both um both questions are good ones so in our experience and a lot of people in this room have experience with multifamily in the midwest in our market so typically um, what we're seeing is one car per bedroom um, is, a, is a ratio that is a, a strong starting place, even for places that are somewhat urban, or I'm sorry, somewhat suburban, you know, somewhere in between Grandview Heights, for instance, which feels a little bit more urban than Dublin out here. I think you're still going to see one per bedroom. One of the reasons that one per bedroom worked, because your suggestion is couples bring two cars to a one bedroom unit. That's true. But in any given, um, on any given evening, on any given weekend, on any, any given night, whether it's residential or office or whatnot, 
you only have about 90% of the people actually at home with their car. You have people traveling, you have people whatnot. So the balance of it typically works out pretty well at one per bedroom. And one per bedroom, given the, the unit mix, ends up being about one and a half per unit. So I think, you know, in our experience and plenty of experiences, like I said, in the room and, and around, you're going to find one per bedroom is pretty consistent in and around central Ohio, but for downtown. Does that make sense? Yes. Can I, can I ask, uh, this is sort of an open question, actually, for probably uh, staff Jenny and and you guys, right? There's a good bet you, and I'm asking as much as anything else. Do you, do you know that anecdotally, or do you have data on that? That, that I mean, I'm going to speak from my experience. That data will generally track. Okay. It might, it might, you know, more modern projects. You might see 1.35. You might see 1.75 a few years back. Got it. But what's tri tripping that up right now with you know very new projects? Kim, you're well aware of this. Is more people are working at home, so there are more cars and multi-family right. Behavior, behavior change yeah, at, at scale. Well, and the reason, um, Aaron, relative to, I'm going to uh, kind of quip a, a little joke here, right? The reason, so we got, we got, it's the Goldilocks version we're looking for. We're trying to get it right, same as you guys are. Yeah. Right, exactly. We're not trying to be have too much because that's a problem, and then we're not trying to have too little because that's a problem, right? We, we've all experienced um, uh, complexes that go both directions in that regard. And so that's the reason I ask about um, you're potentially in a position. I, I forgive me, Jenny. I don't know what data on an ongoing basis the you know this the planning department has, but that data from your coffers can help us as well on an ongoing basis. And that's just a general sort of commentary. Maybe we need to start partnering and understanding that data. Because, you know, we all want the same thing. We want it right. We don't want too much. We don't want too little, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's fair. And we can, as this moves forward, should this move forward, we can definitely make sure that that data is provided. And particularly if you have projects where you have X parking and you have usage data to go along with that, that helps tell the bigger picture story. Yeah, especially in a district like this where we're still, um, there's, there's still some things that are gooey in that regard. We can benefit from your perspective on that. If there's this is, legitimate this data. is a type of valuable input we get here. So um, pretty please won't be the ask next time. We'll have, we'll say pretty please, but here's why. And, and so uh, this has a lot to do with the stage we're at. So the next time around, we'll take this into account and hopefully be able to back it up. Duly noted. And, and, you know, I'm asking that I'm not, I'm not personally requiring it. I'm asking if you have something, a resource like that, that is helping you guide your design choices, we could benefit from that as well. Yeah. And I would say the good news is, you know, on behalf of the, you know, central Ohio development market, it's pretty sophisticated. And a lot of this information is readily available and I would say as an outcome of a next DCAP project you know studying what it looks like you know post pandemic multifamily parking that data is readily available um, and easy to get duly noted thank you any other questions from the commission at this time I just want to Ms. add on that Carter. thank you I'm sorry uh, I just want to add on that note too about garages just to have an idea what the trends are with those as well too in the future thank you any other questions from the commission? Uh, I just have one. So this this parcel is roughly 19 acres. You have single story abutting on one side. You have somewhat empty lot that is the adjacent to in, in between this particular parcel and 270. Was there any investigation into expanding the site to include? more property and therefore something of a mixed use nature. And you're talking about the property to the west? And property to the northwest, yes. Um, have we had any conversations with, it might be good for Mike to come up here, speak a little bit about that. By the way, thanks for your time. My name is Mike Shavini. I'm also with Pizzuti 629 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. Um, we have considered that actually, Rebecca, and we have been in contact with that particular seller. Um, but unfortunately, they're not in a position to actually move forward with anything at this time. So candidly, we have looked at that site as potentially a, a phase two, but once again, there's a lot of easement. It's a very complicated parcel um, because of the easements, because of Cosgrave Ditch that actually starts to roll that way. 
and just the dimensions, but it is something that we've thought about and talked to them about, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I add that just to be, just to be clear? So the, the site that's identified as Metro Place, you all came with a proposal to in front of us before for that, correct? Um, I think informally we might have come forward at least to socialize that with you. I think that is correct. But right. um, on that particular site, we've kind of put that off to the side right now and have really focused all of our efforts actually on this. Right. So just, again, the, that Metro Place site is a site that's, I think it's defined by the power line and then going north. And yeah, then actually, you, is that yeah, correct? Actually, Kim, so Metro Place, if you kind of see there's a, almost like a, a power easement actually yeah, yeah. runs. And right. so we actually own the property that's from the power easement to the north. Right, but to the south is, is all owned by Rock Hill Associates. Is that that's correct? Who own the office building also that's in all that property, right? Yeah. And, and this property, which in the, in the title says Ashland, is this, is this a parcel that's owned by Ashland? That, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here from the public who wishes to make comment on this informal review? Have we received any comment via the live stream? Thank you, Mr. Ausch. So I will close the, the discussion portion. We will move on to deliberation. Uh, again, this is an informal review. We have been provided discussion questions by staff to guide our discussion. Uh, we will consider these in turn. And so I will start. Mr. Schneer, do you want to kick us off? Uh, well, following these, um, I, I can sum up. I think, um, I think it's a, a good use to have, uh, have residential in this area because we need to do something to support the redevelopment of, of Metro Center, which we all agree sort of needs work. So I think I'm supportive of this use. I'm uh, su generally supportive of the, uh, of the development as it's proposed. Um, I'm not as enamored with the uh, concept drawings, but that's something for, uh, you know, for another time. And um, we can also talk at a later time about, um, about the, the parking issues. So um, I would, you know, give a, a qualified yes to, uh, to all four of these. Thank you, Mr. Schneer. Ms. Harder. Uh, yes, um, I am in favor of it, of the units. Um, I think uh, the, uh, I think it's a very useful part of the space, um, and uh, I, the applicant should give a thought to the idea of including other options to the space um, with amenities. I think we have to think about that live, uh, work, play concept, and it's in a perfect spot to be doing that, especially uh, with the future of that. Um, and then I'm also, number two, supportive of the proposal, the layout of it. I like the overall layout, um, but I think there needs to be a little bit more creativity. So I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like of uh, the space, like with the clubhouse, the possibility of that being a mi mixed use, um, uh, reorganizing maybe one of the buildings so that it ha also has an opportunity to have some workspace underneath or a coffee shop or a restaurant or something that, that we um, are bringing everybody uh, in that area. Um, uh, and also, um, whoops, sorry. Sorry, I'm my number three. Um, I'm supportive of the height. Um, I, I also um, think that uh, it fits that area. Uh, I understand um, the garages. Um, I think we should be looking at that a little bit um, and then thinking ahead with solar and so forth with that too with uh, carports. Um, the entrance to the unit could um, have um, more of a into the units themselves, kind of thinking of that landscaping of coming in, like, like almost like a um, a bridge or something that's more um, inviting, uh, but industrial. Um, 
uh, I, keeping in mind with the three stories, I think that, um, and what that top part looks like, because that can make it also look like a four story, and really trying to keep that into mind about what that, that looks like there too. Um, getting, talking about um, uh, number four, which is our support of the design, the layout. Um, I, I like the open space. I like that there's an opportunity for the public to be walking around it. They will find their way in the middle to get over to Smiley Park. I think that is a, a, a great opportunity. Um, it also has, um, the, there's lots of trees around that area, which I think will be a nice opportunity. I like your little tree area, which I can see um, if I'm seeing some things there, there's lots of creative things to be doing that with that. And more and more, we're talking about, um, you know, the ponds and, and what to use uh, for those as well, too. Um, I had a couple other thoughts, too, if I can, if you don't mind. Um, the other thing I was mentioning, too, let me go back to number five. I'm sorry. Um, it's just additional comments. Um, I. I uh, want the balconies to be things that you can use. I see lots of balconies that you you have. Um, if you're, I don't know if you're using elevators or if it's stairs. The enclosure of that's important to me. I'm remembering about the mailboxes and um, not making them that they're kind of uh, not interesting in themselves. Um, and um, solar opportunities. If there's something on the roof or if there's bikes, uh, you know, that, that uh, you can have something that covers them. Um, and then even like at the, at the front, at the, at the bottom, um, on the first floor, there's windows um, that's going to be somebody's unit. Could that be something that has a door to it that um, it becomes more of a patio for them? Um, just more of that outdoor experience. And um, Again, I talk about the, the tops of the buildings should also have a purpose. So if that's open, that extra top, what, what is that inside for, for people? Is that a vaulted ceiling? And um, uh, I think that's, that's my end. So I thank you. Mr. Way. Okay, I'm going to start with the first question and go back to what Mr. Underhill said in one of his remarks. He said, is this mixed use on each parcel, or is this a single use as a complement to the overall uh, development? I, I firmly believe that, um, that there should be a mixed use throughout. I don't know if it's each parcel, but I think mixed use, to me, is, is really integrated into everything. So, um, and I, I uh, this issue of, is there a bigger move here? Um, I think that could be explored. I mean, we're looking at one parcel, but there's a bunch of vacant land, and I understand there's ownership and all of that. But, um, you know, we're talking about uh, repositioning a, a 1980s office park. And so I think we need to think bigger. And every investment that's made going forward needs to contribute to that repositioning. Um, and so one of the questions I would ask, is this the last move of the old way of doing things, or is this the first move of the new way of doing things, and I would hope it's the latter. So to get to the first question, <laughs> um, I am really supportive of a mix of uses, and I think this this area needs residential to help really spring some life into it. But I think it needs to be thought of in a way that's different. It's not just a single use, but it's a, how do we integrate a mix of uses. And um, I understand the challenge of this location of bringing things that just won't work there, right? I mean, to make retail work on the site would be, you know, it's all those things. I, I appreciate that struggle, but I think we need some creativity about what other uses, you know, what's new out there um, in terms of this live work environment and stuff like that that could really change the character of this. Um, I have more questions, but it's related to the following question. So I'm gonna hold those. Or you want me to keep going? Yep, continue. Okay, so um, the goal here again, back to the mixed use thing, should be if people live here, um, they potentially could walk to work and they don't have to get in their car and drive. So it's about, that's to me is what walkability. And so to think of it broadly about the work environment that's around this, that's driven this for years since the 1980s, how do we 
integrate residential where it's a part of a, a new environment that people are walking to work and they're not driving. And, and again, that helps out traffic and everything else that everybody's concerned about. Um, I think the density is too low. I think this is a suburban density. I, I know this is kind of a suburban site, but it's, it wants to evolve into an urban site. So how do we think differently about density? I think it's too low. I'd like to see more. Um, the, 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 my point about is this the old way of doing things or the, the new way is that um, I would classify the, the current site plan as kind of circling the wagons. Um, it's a 1980s approach to uh, housing, which you basically build a cluster of units, you spring it with housing or with parking. I think that's the wrong approach, um, especially as it's related to the Cosgray Commons or whatever. I don't think we should call it ditch anymore because I think it needs to be more than that. But to me, uh, thinking bigger about this opportunity, I think the Cosgray open space is critical to it. I mean, that is. To me, that is the start of creating something unique and different in this whole area. So how do we take that and make it more of a positive place than a negative place? Stop calling it ditch, call it something else. And it shouldn't have parking along it. Buildings should be along it. So that's my other point. Um, I think there's, again, back to the density, I think you've got excessive open space. And the open space that's in the center of the housing, um, I think it's basically... When you circle the wagons, you're protecting yourself, so you're keeping people out. I think the open space that part of this project should be contributing to the entire um, area. Um, the roadway connection, why can't there be three? Why does it just have to be one? Maybe there's a good reason for that, but think of that connectivity, um, and maybe it's only two. I, I'm just saying that I think some other options with that, and they don't all have to be uh, vehicular. There could be some pedestrian bridges, uh, more than just one, but there could be one right in the the center. Um, and then I was just going to, I was just going to say the, I understand the challenge of mixed use in this area. It's not on a major road. It does have visibility from a regional highway, but it's not a regional. That's not what we're looking for. So how do you introduce uses that would work in this kind of disconnected area? How do people get to it? How do people see it? Um, I think that's the big challenge, but the, but the uses, the mix of uses don't always have to be something that's, um, uh, drive by or, you know, that they could be destination. So people are coming here. Like I'm working on a project with this thing called um, chicken and pickle. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before, but it's a pickleball place that has a chicken restaurant with it. it. And, you know, something like that could be a destination. People would drive here because they want to play pickleball, right? Like they're doing it across the street. And, and then you start building something around that that's maybe more public and it starts to really create energy. So those are all my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Way. Mr. Subalak. It's a good, good, good rattle there. Um, first, I want to thank, uh, I think it was Monica who wrote in. Aaron, Eric, Je Jeff, and Mike, thank you. Thank you for speaking. Um, I, too, am, uh, I don't know that anybody's going to be unsupportive of residential in this area. Res it needs residential. It's the first step into the revitalization that we're all articulating. Um, and I do think we collectively are grappling with how to do that really well, not just for your site, but for the entirety of the, of the district in a meaningful way. Um, I'm not necessarily... Mr. Way touched on some really nice creative uh, creative starts to potentially think of the site differently, not just purely residential, but you know what what kind of amenities, complementary amenities start to really work, right? Um, uh, I'm gonna go to and forgive me, I know this is you know sort of a different developer, but the goat restaurants as the clubhouse is a kind of compelling thing for I think it's lifestyle, right? Um, that starts to become a destination, not just for the residents, but for the broader community in, in a certain way, right? Um, this, in the entirety of this area, potentially needs needs um, needs gym facilities. Of course, your gym facility, the historical sort of developer com complex, is it's sort of a private club as opposed to potentially is what if it's a public club and then people are jumping over from their offices and suddenly you have. A little bit of that inter interactivity. So, s some of those tweaks, and of course, the, those two things—the goat and the public 
gym that you know the the local members have access to starts just to start to trigger a whole different array of things and of course those are things you have here regardless you have a clubhouse that you you know you want to enliven you have um you're going to have the gym type of type of thing for these residents um the i'll say this the layout generally uh right the use is the use all day and yes, yes, and yes, how do you make it so it has more emotional tethers to more of the community around you in the local area, I think is, is the critical part. And some of what Mr. Way was touching on starts to do that in a really meaningful way, right? That's the, that's the invitation. Um, relative to, I'm going to sort of go out of order here. I think you have, there's a question on height and massing. I'm not averse to what you're showing. I don't. I don't disagree that um, it could be very different, though, at the same time and, and rethought in a, a meaningful way. I'm not averse to, I'll say, the density or the, the circle, the wagons aspect. The parking is unfortunate, sort of out on the perimeter. But it does, what you do have laid out is, um, while it does... I'm going to say sequester that internal space. There's adequate openings into and out of that internal space. So again, does do you do you draw on the public more robustly if you connect your paths in a really meaningful way, right? Intentionally, does it does it invite all that? And of course, that becomes, I think, if you know the office the office uh, employees around here who like to take a, an after after lunch walk start to walk through it. Of course, that works for your marketing as well, right? Um, in a meaningful way. That's just uh, brand awareness, adopt, uh, brand, brand awareness and exposure via those things. So um, continuing to think on that level is important. The, uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, and I redraw drew it a couple times up here myself, and I, I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys gr have grappled with it too, and I'm, it's as much a question for the city as anything else. How does this connector from Blazer up to Metro, really, how is it most likely to manifest? Because near as I can tell, I drew four different scenarios. All of them are fine. All of them could work, but they mean different things to this site. And of course, your your site currently is basically it's the it's the that drive is the critical part, and then there's a there's a you know what I mean a circle the wagons on each side. And of course, if I if that drive goes someplace different, those two circle the wagons are going to become different you know bulbs off of that that thing and and again deploy the same sort of language and deploy the same sort of uh internal internal space and it could all really work but but of course that drive is the thing that is really literally driving this site as it is right now and so that's not on you alone you're you've done the applaudable thing you've put it in place it has the potential to blossom into the future um, but it is only one of the four scenarios that work with this site from, at least from my vantage point. So I think there's some conversation to be had about if we collectively, you guys and us alike, because I do think it will greatly benefit your site. If we collectively want that to come to fruition, we got to, we got to prepare appropriately for, I'm going to say the most, do a little bit of the scenario planning on what is the most likely. And then, you know what I mean? Um, think through that in a meaningful way. And some of it could be, boy, do we just um, somehow add energy around this site, not just this site, but around, around it in a meaningful way. So that's, unfortunately, that's a little bit of a roundabout answer. I, 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 applaud, the, I applaud the site. I like the sort of, um, I, I happen to like the central sort of um, green space that seems like it could breathe out and uh, with the community. I actually think if you reroute that, if the center right neck of that road, whatever it is, cuts more west, of course, that creates a different sort of opportunity for your clubhouse. And, I, you know, I'm going to, I think Asherton is a clubhouse right in the middle. And then they're, then they're, uh, uh, retention ponds are actually around that clubhouse as well. So not only do they have the pool and the clubhouse, and the, but the retention ponds are centrally located somehow in that in that central um, uh, central area. So it, it just starts to potentially play a little bit differently, good, bad, or indifferent, and it allows you to allows you to push and pull some of those pieces. Of course, density going higher um, changes things. Um, I, I'm not necessarily on the same page about. Purely on the same page about um, 
the mixed use done well could be really fruitful, but of course the wrong mixed use back here will will die die a slow death because nobody you know what I mean it'll it'll serve this pocket and that's it right um, so I, it's something to be something to be thought through there and I, I do think you know even if this is largely residential some of that other mixed use will start to follow this right you can't build the grocery store until the people are there type of thing right um, so. Uh, again, forgive me. There's a lot. There's a lot of good here. Uh, the the site, the, the pathways around the site. Kudos, right? That's the right sort of thinking and touch. Uh, you, it would be a lovely place um, to wander around. Um, this the central space is at this point drawn drawn handsomely. Kudos, uh, MKSK. I think that's Jim. I think that's you, Jeff. Forgive me. Um, I I also literally wrote where where do I throw a football with my son type of thing right so um, there's a there's a certain aspect of that where does a, where does someone kick around a soccer ball it's it's done very handsomely at present but maybe it needs a little more space um, space use in that regard and again those are not you know major things the gre the architecture is generally agreeable but I'm always an advocate for how does the language you've started to put in place how does it differ from building to building to start to create some differentiation from one to the next to the next? And of course that could just be the blend of how much the mix of palette from one to the other. I, I would be an advocate for that relative to a compound that is all the exact same rhythm and, and, um, and use type of thing. And I think with that, I have touched on a wealth of, these critical questions. I do agree with Mr. Way. There is opportunity to think through the open space and not necessarily be internal, internally, you know, a palazzo kind of type, but how does that um, get massaged a little bit different? But um, I don't know that it has to, it's mute. I don't know that it's mutually exclusive from the setup, the arrangement that you currently set up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Subalak. Mr. Fishman. I think you picked me last. This has all been said. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I, I, um, I, I drove that site for about a half an hour today, and, and I had a different view until I came in and listened to everybody else. Uh, uh, when the site, when that area was originally in the, the, the uh, uh, community plans, it was supposed to be a revenue getter for the city. It was supposed to have labs and, and, and uh, not residential, uh, labs and light commercial and so on. Uh, well, obviously that hasn't happened um, and we need something to, to spur that on. And I think that, that a, a residential community, I don't know if, I, if 300 units is the answer. If, I'm sure there'll be more if, if this is successful. I, I don't know if that's too many or too little to start. Um, I, 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 I think that I agree with everybody so far. I mean, I, 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 Mr. Way and Mr. Zopak I, I, and uh, my colleagues, I, I think that um, uh, it really has to be something special. I would like to see the parking handled underground, and I don't know if that's possible or not possible, but I think it, it would make the, 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 the project kind of special instead of having blacktop everywhere. And, and I also think that the, you mentioned Asherton. Um, the Asherton is one of the most successful project in the area, okay, as far as apartments. And they're just average apartments. If you go in, they were built in the 1980s, and I've been in them, and they're nothing to shout about, um, except that um, uh, uh, it, it's considered a really beautiful project in Dublin. On, it sits on Brand Road, and it has the water around the outside, which I think is uh, something you should really think about. That, it, that uh, even we've got a little golf tee out there. I don't know if you've ever <laughs> on Grand Road. So, so um, um, I think if this is something really special, not just something that emulates Bridge Park with the high building with the, the three types of uh, siding on them, and 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 uh, um, um, I think handling the parking and of course the the, the road going that's going to be critical and the positioning is critical. And so it's been all said. So I'll be this time brief, okay? So I'm, I, I, I'm, that's my comments. Thank you, Mr. Fishman. Um, my comments, I'll also be somewhat brief. I agree with Mr. Way and a lot of what he said. Um, I 
I look at the code that we are challenged to adopt and act in force. And the Metro Blazer subdistrict in the DCAP calls for residential supporting the office, but it doesn't just call out residential. It says other uses, including office, personal services, retail, restaurant, bar, entertainment, motel, and then lastly, multifamily residential. In this area, if you need a, a dentist, an orthodontist, anything like that, you're covered. But if you need a haircut, if you need a cup of coffee, if you need uh, a massage, yes, there is a college there, but those types of services that also are ancillary to residential are, are needed in this area. And just like before, when we had, you know, rewind 20 years ago, 30 years ago, as we had people coming in and, and saying, hey, I want to build a, a three-story office building, or I want to build a single-story lab that meets the code, but we didn't want to end up with just a sea of labs or just a sea of office buildings. Those uses are complementary. And so I would hate to have the pendulum swing the opposite direction where we're in a, a pandemic, post-pandemic world where everyone is working from home or the vast majority of people have flexible work schedules and we swing the pendulum too far. And now we have residential and we don't have enough office, we don't have enough retail, we don't have enough uh, support services to make Dublin a wonderful place to live in 10 years that it's been for the last 30 years. And so I think that's what the code is speaking to when it says, yes, residential is okay in this area, but do it well, complement the uses. Don't let the pendulum swing too far so that you're just looking at single site, single component. While this application, this informal review deals with this, we wouldn't want the next parcel to come in and say, hey, we got a good idea, it's residential, just look at it like this. And hey, we have a good idea, we're just residential, just look at it like this, because I think all of us would be worse off for that. And so if there is opportunity to be creative, you know, I am having wild thoughts up here, and I know that it's not comfortable sitting in your seats when you're hearing one commission member saying more parking, another one saying less parking, one saying, hey, oh, I want activation, the other one saying, hey, I want private balconies. That can't be uh, clear. But I think what you're hearing from the entire commission is maybe. Let's, let's, let's work on it together. Let's see what we can come up with. And you have a firm, we will work with you. And we would love to see the parcel develop. It hasn't developed because there's not a demand for what everyone used to think needed to go here. We're being flexible, what could go here, but it has to be done well. And even though we'd like to treat everything with that microscope, just focus on the one parcel, if we did that, I don't think anybody would want to live in the city. So um, I think we need to be pensive when it comes to the special area plan, the future land use, and the community plan. Uh, I think we are ten tenuously okay with residential in the area. The height and the massing depends. It depends on what we come up with. If we can consolidate open space, if we can create a, a greenway, a belt along the causeway well, uh, <laughs> commons, uh, I think that there's some flexibility there. The good news is you're talking PUD, and so we have flexibility there. The better news would be is if you have PUD and the boundaries of that PUD expand so that we have a little bit more ground, a little bit more to work with, then I think you could get something that's excellent. You heard at least a couple of commission members saying, hey, we would even give you more density. How often do you come to a city, a city meeting and somebody's throwing less parking and more density at you? It doesn't happen very often. So I think you have willing partners in this. We just have to make sure we do it right. So Mr. Underhill, thank you very much. Do you have any questions for us, any clarity that you would like? I appreciate the feedback. This was very productive. Um, I think you've answered our questions. I, I would uh, summarize by saying when we're talking, I think, about how and not if, so to speak, which I think is a great thing from our side of the table. And um, so, you know, we'll, we'll try to come up with some creative uh, ideas to bring back to you. And um, we, we appreciate the feedback. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Always a pleasure. 
All right. I've mixed up my papers this evening successfully, so. Um, Jenny, it looks like, uh, and again, thank you all for coming this evening. We certainly look forward to working with you in the future. Oh, yeah, just discussion. Sorry, my papers are all over the place. Yeah, I didn't have anything too terribly um, exciting other than more reminders of dates. So you should have all been invited to the board and commission recognition, which is before council on, um, that's Monday, um, at six o'clock here. And again, some of you have already RSVP'd and, and let me know if you can or can't come. That's fine. It's really to swear in the members that have been reappointed or new members, but also for council to be able to recognize all the work that you do. So you're not required to be there. Just What's opportunity the for some to Monday. This Monday. Monday. Yes. Before council. Um, and then the following week on the 17th, we have our joint work session with um, council and I sent an invite, I believe to everybody for that already. So you should have that on your calendar. That's also in this room. And then we have our kickoff meeting for the public meeting on the 18th, same time, six o'clock. And then we have planning commission. So it's going to be a busy week. And for some other of us, we have the spring HOA meeting right smack in the middle of that too. So um, it's going to be a busy week that week of the 17th. So um, that's all I have. If anybody has anything, let me know. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, and I just wanted to share with the commission, I did have the opportunity to go to the uh, National Planning Conference out in Philadelphia uh, this last weekend. Uh, a couple of the sessions were, were wonderful. Actually, many of them were wonderful. Uh, I wanted to highlight just a couple of the titles in case anyone wants to look up. I think they're published the third week of... April. They definitely, I don't know the exact date, but yeah, they usually typically are available. Got it. So some of the ones that I found insightful were building a con constituency of planning and planning advocates, climate informed planning, elevating science and equity, people over process, which I thought was very good. Uh, storytelling, not yelling was my favorite one. Uh, there were a few others, including um, the life and death of tech tactical curve extensions, which I found fascinating. I geeked out on that one. Uh, and then developing uh, proper greenways and green spaces. And so if you have the opportunity, I highly recommend it. And the storytelling, not yelling, was probably one of the favorite, my favorite sessions, not just from a planning perspective, but also from a work perspective. Uh, I just found the whole thing wonderful. So if you have any questions or if you want to hear more, let me know, or obviously visit the, uh, the planning website and you can find those the links to those sessions. I believe they publish them like the 24th or something like that. And if I could add as well, um, so this year, APA, along with their national conference, they're doing an online uh, conference. So the dates for that are the 26th, it's April 26th through 28th, um, entirely online. So if you would like to do that as well, um, please let us know and we can certainly probably accommodate that. Thanks. And I was gonna raise the same thing. And if there's any, I don't know if there's any overlap in sessions. Do they record stuff and then replay it? No. I think some of them do, uh, but for the most part, they're all new. Uh, okay. Because so I was thinking we could, if Rebecca saw something, we should see. We could see if it links up. But yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for another wonderful Thursday night yeah. and uh, meeting adjourned. And Diane, I will have you know the tactical curve extension.